Hello. So in the last session we discussed about structural controls, and in this session we'll be talking about repair, restoration, and rehabilitation of our structures. This will be the last topic in this module that is special topics, and then we'll be moving on to module number two that will be your chapter number one across your books. Okay. So we'll be moving to that portion, but now for this lecture we will be moving again towards our module that is special topics, and we'll be covering three basic things that will be repair, uh, restoration, and retrofitting of structures. So basically, what do you mean by retrofitting, or you can say what do you mean by restoration? So whenever there is a structural damage to any structural component, you can say either beam. columns slabs foundation etc we used to retrofit it now what do we mean by retrofit it retrofit is basically providing extra caging to it or you can say providing extra strength to it to sustain the loads that are being acted upon for example general cases that are the dead loads and live loads and also other winds loads and seismic loads also acting on it so generally a design span of a structure is let us say 25 years but it requires maintenance at a proper time interval so if a structure tends to fail in prior phases than the actual design phase for example if the design phase is 25 years but the structure is deteriorating well enough and it is on the last stage at about 15 or 17 years then we retrofit the structure to prolong its life span so this is basically what is mean by retrofitting repairing generally means the crackings and the other things are to be repaired across so basically this will be talking about in detail how are many methods are there and how basically we deal with repairing and retrofitting stuffs so moving across what why it the repairing or the retrofitting is to be done so the effect for example leakage can be uh, leakage will be the issue settlement of supports can be the issue deflection of beams can be the issue or columns wear and tear spalling of structures disintegration of structural units cracking in structural units delamination in structural units and scaling these are the basic effects now why these effects are caused so for that we need to identify or we need to understand three basic things that is the defect the damage and the deterioration so if we talk about the defect then there could be a defect in the design itself or that could be defect in the material that we Uh, used for the construction purpose and there could be defect in the construction process that means it is more not properly casted if the design was correct if the material quality or quantity was correct then there could be error in the construction process so these are the pre construction phase which will be termed under defect criteria damage damage could be due to the overloading we while designing have not considered the uh, proper fos you can say the factor of safety that could be the reason chemical spill or you can say earthquake and fire these are the basic damage criteria which causes this kind of effects this effects causes the structure to be uh, prolonged due to this early design span clear yeah? and last one will be the deterioration so deterioration we can say freeze thaw erosion corrosion of metals alkali aggregate reaction and sulfate attack this all comes comes under deterioration part it uh, increases with the time period that means as long uh, as long as we go deep into the uh, design life of the period this process or this effects are being seen in the prior period for example in the first 5 years this period or this effects have not been seen but during the later portion of the design life period this can be seen on any structure clear yeah? so these are the basic effects and causes which uh, induces us to find the proper solution for repair or to retrofit the structure now moving across why this distress in structure occurs so distress in structure is basically divided into two parts the structural portion and the non structural portion if we talk about the structural portion then it is caused by either faulty design faulty construction or overloading or it endangers the building safety and it needs immediate attention if we talk about the structural components that are being damaged if the non structural components are being damaged then it causes by the internal induced stresses in components 
looks unsightly it looks not proper aesthetically and it indirectly leads to structural weakening means if the non structural members are damaged we don't necessarily do the repair and rehabilitation stuff but if the structural members are damaged then the first priority of us will be to retrofit or to restore the original form of it clear next one will be talking about repair and rehabilitation so repair and rehabilitation are again classified into two parts the first one will be the surface repairs and the second will be strengthening of structural components if we talk about surface repairs then it could be due to repairing of the cracks or repairing the deterioration deterioration in the form of either spalling or disintegration that we talked upon and if we talk about strengthening of structural components then it can be due to the enlargement of the faces that we can say the beams be to be bent or etc and composite constructions composite constructions whenever we are using steel and rcc both type of construction in a single unit system then it is basically not going to sustain up to its maximum design limit or design life period okay? so if we talk about surface repairs then let us consider the whole phenomenon across a flow chart first one with the evaluation that what type of things are to be done with what is was the cause of it scope of it or how much damage has been done effect and again scope so effect what effects these things what causes these things etc and it uh, generally deals with the repair analysis if we look upon repair analysis it is again bifurcated into two parts first is the user needs and the structural needs for user needs it basically goes upon with the useful life of the span the urgency that how urgent the retrofitting is to be done if it is very urgent or it can be prolonged to a specific time period cost now if there is a minor cracks in our building then we won't either do a retrofit of the you know, of our building or to repair it properly because we know that small cracks won't be damaging our structure that much and thereby we won't be increasing the original cost of it clear so thereby it depends upon the user need whether we need to do it now or to prolong it a specific period technical performance requirement that means if a building is to resist uh, the purpose of the structure then if the purpose of the structure is fulfilled by various means then we can again prolong the effects of it aesthetics means how it will be looking how it not be looking again it depends upon the user needs if we talk about structural needs then the effect of repair on structure how it will affect the structural design constructability environment and safety okay so, then we will be looking upon the repair strategy so repair strategy means how or what are the available methods what are the materials that will be using and how will be considering the repair work and how it will be protected for a long period of time so this is how the surface repairs actually process of surface repairs the generally flows through now if we talk about crack repair techniques so basically there are various crack repair techniques we will be looking all in detail so crack repair technique is bifurcated into various parts the first one will be epoxy injection grouting second will be routing and sealing third will be flexible sealing next will be stitching next will be short creating grouting drilling and plugging and pre stressing steel this all are the crack repair techniques that is been asked in your examination too that write a short note on crack repair technique or you can say uh, list and the various crack repair techniques and only and answer one or two in detail it, it is been asked in this form okay? so we'll be looking each and every term in detail now first we'll be looking at epoxy injection grouting so as the term itself suggests injection grouting grouting means filling the voids epoxy is a material which has been filled to the voids okay? so as you can see in the figure itself these are the needles that are injected in the cracks as you can see and in these needles this is a pressure pump and via the pressure pump the material termed epoxy is being indulged or is being induced to this structure this material fills all the voids or you can say all the line as you can see in the form of crack and thereby our structure will again gain its original strength so this type of process is called epoxy injection grouting next if we talk upon it will be routing and sealing 
so as you can see this is the original crack in a structure so it can be either done by routing or it can be done by sealing routing means if there is a crack will be making a groove of it here it is uh, mentioned as 6 mm groove is made and here this groove is again be filled by a mortar stuff or you can use it by sealing so this sealing this is called a joint sealer joint sealer is available in the market so this can be used to seal the crack that have been done so this is the live example of how this stuff is done this black portion as you can see is the sealing that is been provided in the cracks as you can see here again these are the cracks and this is the sealing that is been provided by the via medium of this pump next is stitching stitching means to stitch the cracks this is the uh, figure that will be dealing upon and this is the actual stitching process that is been done on site clear next is short creating short creating that means it is a form of plastering so if there is a crack in the wall stuff or you can say the other uh, main outer boundary layer stuff then you can either retrofit it or you can say you can either uh, reinforce it again and then short create it via concrete so this process is known as short creating next if we talk about the process will be grouting so grouting are again basically classified into two parts the first part is portland cement grouting and the second is chemical grouting this is basically used in masonry structures so whenever there is a deterioration in the masonry structures for example if you see here there is a brickwork being done and in this layer between two bricks this portland cement is being filled Yes, the process of filling is called grouting. So it is been filled by a Portland cement, so it is called as Portland cement grouting. Next is chemical grouting. Here, an example of soil is been taken. So as you can see here, there is a high pressure hydraulic pump being used. The gauge monitoring is being used to see how much amount of uh, liquid, or you can say the material is being used, chemical is being used. So chemical or cement ground is in injected to prevent soils from collapsing. this can also be done to any structure in this form clear so these are chemical grouting next is drilling and plugging so this is a retaining wall as you can see here it is a precast concrete or mortar plug set that is in bitumen and this is a crack filled with grout so this crack is first of all drilled with this precast concrete and then it is will plugged so this is will process is called drilling and plugging a hole of 50 to 60 mm minimum diameter is drilled in the stem of wall centered and following the round a crack so wherever there is a crack a hole is been done uh, digged in it and then it is been plugged via mean of precast concrete or you can say mortar plug in it clear so this type of process is called drilling and plugging next is prepared by pre stressing steel so here as you can see there are cracks being formed or there were cracks being formed and then a pre stressed steel are been used in it to fill all the cracks and voids in it this is the very costly method and we don't generally use this type of uh, this is the very costly method and therefore we generally don't use pre stressing steel to repair our cracks generally we use epoxy or grouting stuff only clear so this was basically all about how to fill up the cracks now we'll be talking about the retrofitting stuff now retrofitting generally means jacketing now what do you mean by jacketing so as you can see in the figure itself there was an old structure which was deteriorating well enough and to again regain its original strength the steel bars are be reinforced around it so whenever we are reinforcing the steel bars around any body that means either any beam or a column it is termed as jacketing clear so jacketing concrete jacketing or you can say retrofitting is a procedure by which we can increase the strength of a building structure it is the modification of existing structure to make them more resistant to seismic activities to generally increase the earthquake effects or you can say the earthquake resistance ability of the structure we generally use uh, this type of structure this type of method that is our jacketing or you can say the retrofitting for an old structure so if we talk about type of jacketing then basically there are two types global or local a it is called here as you can say global or local 
so local again it is characterized by four portions that is jacketing of beam jacketing of column jacketing of slab or foundation providing jackets on all these cases are termed under local and if it about global then adding a shear wall adding a bracing using a seismic damper or chemical rebarring these are all the additional means that we if we use in a structure then it is termed under lo global jacketing and if we lose just to retrofit it or use jacket in it then it will be termed as local jacketing now if we talk about column jack jacketing then this is an actual figure or you can say actual snap of it these are the steel bars that are being used to cover the old deteriorated column and thereby increasing the strength of the original column so this type of structure is called jacketing so this is the basic phenomenon of how jacketing works this is the existing column and this is the rc jacket that has been used these are the new reinforcement and they are tied via this stirrup bar clear so ties linking new x and existing reinforcement so these are tied with the existing column and thereby this strength of the old column can be transferred to the new column and this is the beam jacketing if the same number type of jacketing is done on beam then it is called beam jacketing so again the same phenomenon steel bars are been uh, rounded up or you can say are jacketed along around the original beam and then it is been tied using the splices so slab demolished to place the new beam so this hash portion is the new beam that has been placed and uh, the slab above it will be demolished and so here by the covering whole portion with the jacket stuff so this is beam jacketing so this was all about on uh, repair retrofitting and rehabilitation of these structures the yeah? so in the next session we'll be talking about a new model that will be fundamental of vibrations of buildings thank you